Hello, it's Peter. Uh, this video is intended to give you advanced information on how to connect an Epson T3 robot uh, to a uh, PLC. Uh, there's going to be a series of videos and uh, this is a more advanced video. Uh, in class you will have opportunity to work on creating a simple uh, project in the Epson RC uh, Plus 7 software and learn how to connect via USB connection. This is an advanced uh, level video where we will be connecting via Ethernet. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate how the Ethernet communication card is installed and configured in the software uh, so you can communicate to it with a PLC and uh, um, how the other Ethernet port is configured so you can uh, set it up to communicate for programming with the programming software. So I'm here in Blackboard and uh, as always there's a ton of resources. Uh, this is typically the entry page you see first. To find more information click on course documents and then scroll down until you find the folder Epson documentation. Uh, when you click on this you'll see several user guides. Uh, you're going to see some information on the wiring uh, for e-stop connections. There's a, a project a doc file here on creating a new project which we are not covering in this class in this video uh, that's in class. Uh, further down is a link to Epson's uh, website with more up-to-date information. So before we get started I'm just gonna minimize this window. Uh, this is the icon you'll be looking for the RC plus 7.0 that should be installed on your computer. Uh, this manual, uh, it's a Word document, and you can use this to set up a new project from scratch. It's pretty much step by step. Yeah, there might be a few updates and changes, um, and your instructor will demonstrate how to set up a new project or look at existing sample projects to get an idea of what the code typically looks like uh, that you can copy and paste and use in other systems. Uh, so again, this particular instance uh, of the video is intended to show you the more advanced connection via Ethernet and configuration in the robot to communicate over Ethernet IP to a PLC. Um, I have the uh, 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 software uh, already up. Um, I also have a couple of documents up here. So these are the PDF manuals. There are uh, different revisions out, probably more recent from Epson that talk you through all the details, give you a ton of examples on programming. Uh, and there's also a field bus manual um, that talks about configuring uh, the uh, Ethernet IP card that is separately installed uh, for communications. So be sure to have those available and reference them as needed. Um, here now, I have the software. So this is Epson RC Plus 7.51a. Uh, your software version might be slightly different. Um, I need to know what my IP address of the robot controller's built-in Ethernet port is in order to communicate to it. Um, again, in other videos and in class, you typically use a USB cable. It's very easy to use. There's a USB port um, in the controller on the back. You plug it in, you plug the other end into your laptop and if you're using USB from this pull down menu it's just simply right there. It's ready to go. It should connect and then allow you to uh, uh, go to the next step depending on what you plan to do. And now to connect over Ethernet you have to do a couple more things. Uh, so first of all um, I know what the IP address is of my robots built in Ethernet port. Uh, so I will have to set up a driver for that. So I'm going to click on setup and PC to controller communications. That opens up this PC to controller communications um, dialog box. I'm going to add a new driver. So I'm going to click add and I'm going to leave this box checked connection to real controller via Ethernet. Uh, you can connect to virtual controllers too. Remember Epson has a great built-in simulation software. That's where the simulated virtual controllers would come in. But we have a physical robot for physical connection uh, between um, the systems. I'm going to click OK. The next step, I need to know the IP address. So I'm simply going to click in this field and type in the IP address of my robot. I'm going to click Apply. Whoops. 
and if you mistype, it's going to warn you because it needs to be 192.168.1.202 in my instance. And then we click apply. So now I have this set and uh, the auto connect box is checked. If I can click or connect here and I configured this correctly, then I should get a dialog box that says, hey, the controller right now is in automatic mode. Do you want to leave it and just monitor operation? Or do you want to switch to program mode? Which is what I want to do because I want to uh, bring the projects currently in the robot controller to my programming software. So I'm going to put it into program mode. And uh, you can see it says program here and there's a warning present as well. I'm going to close this dialog box because I'm now connected. You can see up here connection to Ethernet IP. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, uh, just like almost every other automation device you work with, you want to copy what's currently running to your local computer. So that is true for PLCs, for VFDs, for other robot software. Uh, to do so, you can click on project and then click import. Um, I'm going to click on this and then you would import from what? You can have backups of uh, programs, so you could import a project from a PC or from an actual controller. Uh, there are also controller backup folders that uh, you can connect to or bring projects in from. I'm going to check the physical controller because that's what I'm connected to. I'm going to click next and then you have to pick a place where you want to save it to. So these are default folders that are set up by the absence software on your local computer. I'm just going to create a new folder here and uh, call it demo. Select it. The project name is given uh, by the project that's running inside the controller. Mine happens to be called Promega underscore G7572. I'm going to click next again. And now that you're ready, uh, it's going to open up the project after import. I'm going to click import. So I'm going to just uh, hang tight here for a little bit. Let this import. And now I can see, you know, on the project explorer window, I got the actual program that's running. So if I double click this, I can see this is the code that's inside the system. Um, yeah, the structural text uh, that's being used. Yeah, this are the, these are the commands uh, to go to certain positions or to look for certain inputs uh, or send outputs to the PLC that's also connected. Um, the uh, most important thing, yeah, again, this is uh, intended to show you the configuration of the robot controller. So I can talk over Ethernet IP and the uh, separate uh, Ethernet IP ad Ethernet address for the controller itself. Uh, so to find those and look at those, um, we want to go to the robot manager, and I'm going to just expand this window a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, here you can see just to make sure we can actually communicate with the system. Uh, you can see here is the motor uh, on off state. It's currently off. If I click on here, I'm going to turn the motors on. So I know I'm physically connected and communicating with the system. I'm just going to turn the motors off in my instance. Um, if I, the motors are off, obviously I cannot jog. So there are jog functions here. So this is the regular robot manager where you can uh, turn the motors on uh, and do jogging operations. Um, so where the actual settings are in order to uh, set up communication between programming software and controller uh, and uh, PLC communications to the Ethernet IP card, you go to setup and then system configuration. Um, once you go in here, you kind of have to expand these uh, plus signs everywhere. And uh, one thing to look for is, is in startup. So this is later on where if you want the robot to be controlled by the PLC, start up in auto mode and be waiting for signals to start running. Yeah, those are other changes, separate videos we're going to do, auto start. Uh, yeah, this can be set up if you want to uh, have the PC, the software's on, yeah, start the Epson software right away. We don't need any of this. 
Uh, so on the controller tab, yeah, when you click this and you're connected to a physical robot, it gives you the serial number, uh, the MAC address of the built-in Ethernet card, firmware version of the controller, and uh, today's date. Um, then the general settings. When we click this, it's the same as controller. We can then click on the configuration. So this address, if you recall in the Ethernet, I, Ethernet driver that I use for my connection, this is where you put the IP address and the subnet mask of the built-in Ethernet port that is used for communications to the controller. Again, this is between the programming software and the physical robot itself. The other setting, uh, yeah, in order to communicate with your PLC, uh, that's a different card. So it's an add-on card, and if you don't have it installed, you won't see this option. Uh, but we can click down on the inputs and outputs, and uh, the naming convention is called Field Bus. And uh, within the Field Plus device, you set up the input bytes and output bytes. Again, this is how many uh, bits of inputs can be sent between the PLC and the robot. Uh, and this setting has to match the uh, Ethernet card configuration on the PLC. Um, then within the general settings, yeah, again, this is again the general settings of the field bus device. Uh, Ethernet IP, uh, this is where you set up the IP address of the Ethernet IP card. Uh, you don't need these DNS settings, yeah, because we just talk an IP address to IP address. Um, we want to make sure it's set to static so it doesn't change, but you need again an um, Ethernet IP address and the mask. And uh, if you happen to have Ars Logics 5, Ars, Lo Ars Classic Gateway set up, yeah, this is where you can see this is the Ethernet connection that I'm using to communicate between my PLC and the robot, which is 102 in this case. So uh, be sure that those are set up correctly and uh, you don't have the same IP to both devices. Uh, that could lead to a lot of problems. Um, the next setting is the uh, TCP IP settings. Again, this is again the same IP address that we have here defined on the field bus device for the Ethernet IP address. Yeah, so those should be identical and uh, yeah, we'll provide more information on what these other settings can be. Um, on the uh, um, Input signals, yeah, we'll come back to that on the remote control. There's an Ethernet device. Um, again, there's a port number specified, so all these settings have to be just right in order for things to work. Um, for remote control, yeah, this is the, later on the input range that uh, yeah, we'll set up and configure, and I'll demonstrate in a separate video. Will you align um, input signals to an input uh, number that is uh, specified for the Ethernet IP range. Um, and uh, where those are uh, under inputs and outputs, you can see you know, these are the standard inputs and outputs. And basically all you're doing is you're um, transferring the standard signals to this range that's defined for the field bus Ethernet IP device. Um, so that is how you uh, set up those additional inputs that are later referenced between the PLC program and the robot to communicate. All right, I'm going to leave this video right here um, and uh, do a separate video on the actual communication settings on the PLC side and how they interact with the inputs and outputs in our Epson robot software and controller. All right, so be sure to reference the manuals that are out here. Uh, they have good information, uh, lots of uh, troubleshooting tips, both on the field bus controller option as well as the uh, actual controller itself. For the latest manuals, um, you can always go to the Epson RC Plus software, click on help, and the manuals are built into the software. So they can also be found here. All right, that's all I got for today. Thank you.